We'll get started by adding our logs by adding a cylinder. We'll go with maybe eight vertices. Okay, we'll hit F2 and call it log. And we'll tab into edit mode, scale down. We'll rotate X 90 degrees. We can go to the materials tab and add our bark material. Next, we'll add a modifier, subdivision surface. And we'll tab into edit mode and hit control R to add a control loop here. And again, over here. And then we'll inset here to add some more control as well as here. Now we'll select these two faces, go to the material tab, press plus and add a new material which we'll call wood end and we'll assign it. Now maybe we should hit control plus or select select more or less and more and then we can assign that and that should give us a little bit of a better result. We'll increase the levels viewport and we'll hit shade smooth. Now we can maybe tab into edit mode and scale shift Y to make it skinnier. Now we'll go to the shading tab and on our wood end material, we'll hit shift A, add image texture and open one up. I went with this textures.com wood ends 00221 texture. We'll just plug that into the base color. Now we're going to have to go and fix the UVs. So we'll go into UV editing. We'll click on our material and we'll select the wood end material. And maybe we'll go into a side view. So I'll press one on the numpad. Or I could use the tilde key and go to the and go to the front view, I guess. I can hit U, project from view. And I can go back to the material preview and I can select all in the UV editor and I can scale it up. We'll go with something like that. Maybe you can get a little bit more centered. Something like that could work. Back to the layout tab. We'll go ahead and add a new modifier. We'll go with the displace. We'll drop the strength to probably 0.1. Maybe lower the mid level to zero so that it only goes out. And maybe we'll drop the strength a little bit more, 0 0.05. And now we have some slight displacement. Now we'll go and make this a big pile of a bunch of them. I'll press Alt D. And then I might scale it down a little bit and rotate on the Y axis. Maybe scale it up a little, rotate on the Y, Alt D. Maybe I'll scale it down and then scale it down again, but pressing Shift Y to scale it down only on the Y plane to get a smaller one. Maybe one more. And then we can just keep doing this and make a pile. Now maybe it might be a good idea to go ahead and add something to hold this in place. So I'll select this piece of wood. I'll hit Shift D. I'll move it over. Tab into edit mode, scale it down. Still using the crack face attributes to have the UVs fixed automatically. 
Maybe I'll scale this on the Y, make it more of a flat piece of wood. And then I can move it into place here. I'll have part of the holder be under the snow. And maybe I'll rotate Z 180 to have it look a little different. Maybe I'll tab into edit mode and bring this down to make them shorter, be a little bit taller. That's something like that. And maybe it might make sense to shift D and duplicate that. Rotate X. I'll hold control to snap it into increments and make it 90 degrees. Tab into edit mode, scale it down. And I'll just move this here. And I'll Alt D and duplicate that there. Now I believe I forgot to rename these, so I'll select each of them with Shift click to select multiple. I'll hit Control F2 to bring up the batch renamer. I'll go change the find replace to set name and change the suffix to new. And I'll just call it log holder. And I might just move these in a little. And then I'll try to fill in the edges here. Uh, maybe I'll bring one last one here. Now we have a bunch of logs there. Now I think it might be nice if these logs had the ends be a different color on each of them, since it looks a little bit too uniform here. So I'll go to the shading tab and I will bring out an object info node. That'll get me this random per object variable. I'll press control space to zoom in and I can press shift A to add and search for a hue saturation node. I can take the color from my texture into that and I can search for a mix RGB node. I can mix the color of my texture with the color of the modified texture color into that and I'll use the random as the factor of the mix. And I can hit control space to zoom back out. And then I can just go ahead and tweak this value, make it a little bit darker on some of them maybe. Maybe 0.5 might be good. Maybe lower the saturation on some. Maybe a slight hue shift, that's way too much, but maybe 0.47 might be okay. And now we have some variation in our logs colors. Now let's add a chair. So we'll select a piece of wood, hit shift D. We'll hit F2 and call it chair piece. Tab into edit mode, we'll scale it down. We'll move it here. We'll try to figure out what kind of size we want this. So we're gonna have this maybe, maybe about that big compared to this rail. And then we can hit slash to go into the local isolated view mode. I can hit Alt D and drag this over. And I can hit R Z90 to rotate that 90 degrees on the Z axis to have a different wooden pattern in view. I'll hit Shift D and duplicate this and drag it on the Y axis. I'll rotate X90. I'll drag it over here. Tab into edit mode and scale this down on the Y axis. I'll hit GZ and move it and get it into the center. I'll move it here. 
I'll hit Alt D and duplicate it and have another one there. I'll hit Shift D on this and duplicate that. And maybe I'll hit edit mode and scale that down a little on the X axis to make it a little thinner. Drag it here. Scale Z. And fit it into there. I'll add an array modifier. I'll have the Y axis be about negative 1.4 maybe. And I'll bring the count up to 5 and drag that into the center. I'll hit Shift D and duplicate this. Rotate Y 90. Move it here on the Y plane. Tab into edit mode and I'll scale it up a little on the Y axis and I'll drag it over here. Get it to fit into there nicely. I'll select this guy, hit Shift D, drag it about there with the bottom of the chair sticking out a little bit. I'll tab into edit mode and scale that down. Something like that. I think these are a little bit too fat, so I'll hit tab to go into edit mode, S to scale, shift Z to make it skinnier. And I'll drag it here. And same goes with this. And this guy, but on the Y plane. Then I can select this, hit Shift D, drag it up, get rid of the array, and drag it over here. Can Alt D on this and drag it over here. And the same with this. Now we need some support on the bottom, so I'll hit Shift D, rotate X, and I'll hold Control to snap into increments. I'll drag this up. Tab into edit mode and scale down on the y-axis. I can hit Alt D and drag this down on the z-axis. Alt D again, drag it over here. And I can hit Shift D, rotate Z 90 degrees. And drag it here. Maybe a little bit higher. And then I can Alt D and drag it over there. Now I want this to be a rocking chair, so I'm going to select this guy, hit Shift D and drag it down. And then I'm going to box select all of this and rotate on the Y axis back a little bit. And then I'll move this here, tab into edit mode, maybe bring this face back a bit, hit control R, add a loop, drag it down, hit control B to bevel it and I'll add some loops by using scrolling up on the scroll wheel. And then I can drag this up, I'll tab into this, select that bottom face. Now press G, Z, Z to move up on the Z axis, but the local version. And I'll hit Alt D on this to drag it over here. 
and I'll try to center this out a little better. And now we got a rocking chair. Now to position this, we'll want to have it maybe parented to something else to make it a little bit easier to move without having to try to select everything since it's all a bunch of objects. So I'll go and hit shift right click and put the 3D cursor about in the center. And I'll hit shift A, add an empty. I'll use a cube. I'll lower the radius a bit to make it match, maybe a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe a little smaller. And we can hit F2 and call this chair. Now we can hit A and select all. And then we can shift select and shift select again the box to make sure that we have that the active object. And we can hit control P and parent to object. So now if we select the box, it'll move along everything with the box. Now accidentally I see that I put all my objects in this video into the wrong collection. So I'll just select the chair and shift select at the last log. Hit M to move to a collection. Now I'll just put it in my main collection. Now if I go to my filters, I can have the select restriction toggle. I can open up my chair parent and I can turn off the selection of each of these sub objects. So now I can't select any of the pieces on my chair. I can just select this box to move it as a whole. I'll drag this back up. Then I can hit slash again to make sure that I can see everything. And I can select my box and I can rotate on Z, drag it up and just position my chair easily. Something like that will be a good. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And that way you can see more videos like this and the rest of the series. Thank you.